now, and and I don't want to go down so deep that it that it uh, makes you lose your place. But let me just read to you because you might say, well. Um, are you sure that, that they all do this? Uh, Jesus of the Bible, and if you want to turn to 1 Timothy 2.15, that's the verse I reference in there. 1 Timothy, and this is a, a very important verse for us who share with our neighbors and relatives and friends. The Jesus of the Bible, and by the way, this is from uh, a Catholic historical site that uh, has a column in one of the Internet sites called Proclaiming the Gospel. The Jesus of the Bible is the only mediator between God and man. Look at 1 Timothy 2.5. For there is one God, 1 Timothy 2, 5, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. How come he's a mediator? Verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So Jesus Christ has earned the place of being the mediator because he alone is the ransom and the redeemer. And only the one who paid the price can go between. Now, the Roman Catholic Church has replaced Christ the Mediator, with Mary the Mediator. You say, how do you know that? Well, Pope Pius IX proclaimed, and let me read to you, God has committed to Mary the treasury of all good things, in order that everyone may know that through her are obtained every hope, every grace, and all salvation. For this is God's will, that we obtain everything through Mary. That's a pope. Speaking ex cathedra, which ex cathedra means from the, the seat where he speaks on matters of doctrine. And when he speaks on matters of doctrine and practice with the church, he speaks infallibly. That means he speaks on the same level as the Bible within their teaching. And so what, what I'm sharing with you is if you look at 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6, the Spirit of God breathed out through the Apostle Paul these words. There is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. One God, here we are, Jesus is between us. And the Roman Catholic Church says there's one God and you, and Mary is between us. And that's why Mary is so dangerous. Because that's not an isolated feeling. That's not a, uh, just a folklore. That is official dogma. That means it's, it's something that has been argued within the church among the theologians. It's something that's gone to the next level where the cardinals have met and the Pope has put his imprimatur on it and it's become official, incontrovertible doctrine of the church. Exactly opposite of the scriptures. Well, Jesus offered himself once. Now turn back to, uh, well, you're in Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter 9. And I want to just keep underlining in your mind these verses. Jesus said, verse 25 of Hebrews 9, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. Jesus said he shouldn't even be offered annually. And I share with you last week, he's offered hundreds of thousands of times a day in the Roman Catholic teaching. But Jesus is only to be offered once, and he mediates his sacrifice. But the Roman church says he has to be offered continuously and Mary mediates the sacrifice to us. Can you see the contrast? God, Christ offered once. The Roman church, Christ offered continuously. God says Christ is one that mediates his grace and his sacrifice. The Roman church says Mary is the one that mediates his hope, his grace, his sacrifice. Well, let's look specifically at Hebrews 1.3 which continues, and it says this, notice, Jesus is the brightness of God's glory. He is the express image of God's person. He upholds all things by the word of his power. And when he had, what? By himself. All alone, no help, no Guadalupe needed, no uh, army of priests to re-sacrifice him. He all by himself purged our sins. And you notice what the next part says. He sat down. That is the critical element of our salvation. That's what the whole book of Hebrews is about because the whole book of Hebrews is written to Jews who had looked at the message of Christ and were looking back at the Old Testament sacrificial system and they were wavering and they were turning and they were going back to the Old Testament system and, and Jesus Christ was presented as the one that they were to have their hope in and not to turn back to the weak and beggarly elements of 
of washings and baptisms and continuous sacrifices and all the Levitical system, that they were to see the perfection of Christ. And what Roman Catholicism is, is a return to Old Testament sacrificial law-keeping ceremonialism and legalism. You say, what do you mean? Well, the Roman Catholic Church has crudely sewn together the veil that Christ rent. Do you remember that the place of atonement was behind in the holy place, and here was this big 60-foot or 70-foot high and 30 or 40-foot wide, 6-inch thick, massive veil? And from the cross, Jesus reached from the cross, he touched the veil and split it from the top to the bottom, saying, the way is open now to me. Do you know what Roman Catholicism has done? They've sewn the veil back up. And they've said, no, you can't come to God anymore. You've got to have a priest, and the priest has to have the help of Mary. And what they're saying is the work of redemption continues and the sacrifice goes on. But Hebrews 1.3 says, and again it's another contrast, He by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the one who atones for us. 